Hello and welcome to T.O. Blue Jays. Are the Blue Jays really World Series contenders? They should be, but I really think it depends on the success of the younger guys this year. Not so much Vlad, although Vlad can improve in the postseason still. Um, you know, there's a lot of talks about, you know, everyone saying, oh, this team is World Series caliber um, team and, you know, we can win the World Series. We just have to take the next steps um, and so on and so forth. And I, I think that's pretty much how you can describe this team. I think they very well could win a World Series, but I really think it depends on the success of the younger guys. Um, because let's be honest, Kevin Kiermaier, Brandon Belt, they can win a World Series on the right team. They can definitely be players who help their team get to the World Series. There's no doubt about that. Even Vlad, I think, is at the level where he can really contribute to a playoff team. But I think the problem is that so far, the lineups that Vlad has been part of in the two postseasons he's been to have not really helped Vlad let him be himself and not overdo it. So what I mean by that is in 2020 especially, there was absolutely like no offense. Um, you know, it was horrendous. And I feel like because of that, Vlad was trying to do too much to put the Blue Jays in the lead. And I think this kind of happened in 2023 too. It's like Springer struck out way too many times. You know, luckily, Tio got two home runs in that one game. It was kind of felt like in the only two games, again, like since everyone was having horrible at-bats, that Vlad was trying to do too much to get ahead in the game. And I just think that that's the reason why the Blue Jays didn't really do that well in 2022. I think I said 2023, but I meant 2022 last year and in 2020. I just think that... The players we need to look at more are Bo Bichette, and now two players are gone, T.O. and Guriel Jr. They're out of here. Um, but I think Bo Bichette, at the end of the day, that guy needs to get in check. Um, you know, he talked about this team needs to take the next steps if they want to win the World Series. And honestly, Bo, that is you. You're the guy who needs to take the next steps because... You can be really good, but the problem is that he's really streaky. Like, he's got some months where it's like last September, home run after home run and all those doubles, um, you know, end of August, September. But then it was like, what did he really do in the postseason, right? It's like, it's one of those things where it's like, he seems to make a lot of, a lot of bad plays and just rushes things and it shows both on the defense and offense side of things. And then even Springer, you know, when he was in Houston, he had those very protected lineups. And yes, I know there was also the Gene scandal. I'm not going to talk about that. Nonetheless, he had protection in the lineup, one for nine. Everyone can hit, no problem, pre, post, Gene scandal. And now he comes to Toronto, and he should be performing at a better level because he does have the experience. Um, but, you know, this year it just seemed like he struck out a lot, and it, it really sucked to watch. So I think Springer also needs to improve. Now, I will say it will help if some of the other guys below him can do better too, because then that way, same thing with Vlad, like he doesn't have to try to do too much to get ahead. Um, but I just think that if some of the younger players and Springer – can improve i think adding kevin kiermeyer and the brandon belt into your lineup and then also adding dalton bar show as another lefty in the lineup can really make a difference in your team and i think this year too if kevin bishio is able to play a bigger role for that you know it's not so much okay great we got to the wild card we have some confidence but we're kind of scared if kevin bishio can play a bigger role and we can do some more matchups. Um, again, this year we're also playing all the teams in the MLB. So we have a chance to 
um, win a lot more games because we're playing a lot, like we're playing more games against the lesser teams like the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Detroit Tigers, the Chicago White Sox, and you know some of the teams like the Marlins. We're pay playing those teams more, and the really, really group teams that are really, really good, like the Astros, the Yankees. Even the Red Sox, I mean, last year when we went 19-3 and three against them or something along those lines, 16-3. and three. Um, But even like Baltimore really played us hard last year. And Tampa Bay, even though they had, you know, a bit of a struggle last year, they always find ways to beat us. Um, so in that regard, you know, we're not playing those teams as much. We should be able to win more games. I mean, hopefully that's able to help us get closer to first place or even have some more confidence in our abilities um, but really when you think about what's happened in this offseason in terms of not so much necessarily we have like it's not like we've improved like oh my god look how much we improved we went from being a really crap team to all of a sudden being like a 650 uh, percentage team that's not the case. What we did is that we kind of replaced players that were good, but not in the right fit for this team. Like, Teoster and is going to the Mariners. It makes more sense. Now, they were also looking to improve their defense, and adding Teo to right field doesn't really improve their defense. In fact, it probably makes it worse. But he fits that offensive profile more because there's a lot more lefties in that lineup. And also... Um, you know, the ball carries more, as far as I know, in Seattle. I know it carries a lot in Toronto, too. But I think that T.O. makes more sense for a team like that, um, you know, than for the Blue Jays. Because I think T.O., like that team seemed, like, I'm not a fan of Seattle, obviously. But, you know, T.O. seemed to kind of fit into that team that had a little bit more fun. Um, whereas the Blue Jays had too much fun and not the right type of fun, like Seattle was doing things, I mean, they beat the Yankees over and over and over, even in Yankee Stadium, I mean, it was unbelievable, um, and then Gurriel, I do feel bad about going to Arizona, because they're just not on the right track right now, and Moreno, uh, Moreno, however you want to say, um, also on that deal going over, so it does help them a little bit more, um, but now, okay, now, yes, we didn't replace necessarily the power of the Oscar Hernandez, or the on-base percentage of Gurriel. But what we have done is now you add Dalton Varshow to the lineup, and now you've improved not only your defense, but you've also improved your offense, because now the pitchers have to take a look at the Blue Jays differently. Okay, it's not just eight right-handers in cabin visual occasionally, you know, it's uh, or nine right-handers in cabin visual occasionally. Now you've got a, a impact left-handed bat who can play left field and even catcher really need really need him to, but obviously he's not going to. Um, and he can play center if he really want to. Um, so now you add great defense and a great offense um, player as well. Okay, so now we have Kevin Kiermeyer playing center field. That pushes George Springer to right field. And we all know that George Springer gets hurt a lot because of, you know, I guess prior injuries and being over 30 now, playing center field, I mean, between 30 and 40 are really not that well, especially between 30 and 35. But it's more grueling on Springer playing center field. But now you put him in the right field, and now he should be able to play more games and have more energy in his at-bats because he's not playing center field. So now what you've done, you've opened up right field for Springer to play, which I believe he played a lot of right field actually when he was in Houston. I don't think he was always a center fielder because I know they had, you know, a pretty good outfield there. Um, but now you can put him in right field. And now that allows him to put more effort into his bats because he doesn't have to put as much energy into playing center field. And hopefully also means less likelihood of significant injury, which should allow him to play more games, which can give him more at bats to do more damage. And now, Okay, yes. Is Kevin Kiermaier going to hit 15, 20 home runs and have a 225 to 250 on base percentage or uh, a batting average? Probably not. You know, he might have a 225 on base percentage, you know, not very high. 
but what he does in terms of pesky at bats okay yes maybe he doesn't necessarily get on base all the time he doesn't have a lot of pop but Kevin Kiermeyer has the ability to have long at bats and what that does is that helps the other team members see more pitches so yes you know he's batting from the left side it's not the same as batting from the right side but you get to see what a pitcher may throw a little bit more and then his defense I mean every time that Kevin Pilar did not get a gold glove who won that gold glove that year oh Kevin Kiermeyer. so Kevin Kiermeyer's defense obviously has probably declined a little bit since you know the 2015 2016 era of the Blue Jays and even before that but nonetheless he's still great defensively and that really helps that our team out so now our team has improved significantly in the defensive side in the outfield and now who else have we added in terms of uh, position players well Brandon Belt he's going to be your everyday DH most likely you know he's also going to be able to play first base at a high level so that Vlad can get some days in DH or even have a few days off if needed but what that does to the team too is again is he going to hit 30 plus home runs like he used to probably not but even to give you somewhere between 20 to 25 if he's fully healthy this year that's really good but again he's hitting from the left side so now what you're doing, again, is that this year we're going to have three left-handed hitters in our lineup pretty much every day, at least two. Um, you know, it's not four or five like some teams have, or seven like the Tampa Bay Rays. But nonetheless, the approach that pitchers will have to make to our team now is a lot different than last year. And, you know, again, we may not have the same power numbers, but look how much the power did for us. Like, really, at the end of the day, we've improved so much defensively that now we don't have to worry about getting 10 runs because now it's the defense, you know, you can't, there's no defense over the walls, I realize, but now it's the defense, we should be able to save runs. Because so that's where we're at. And truth of the matter is too, you want strong defense in the outfield because that's what prevents doubles or even triples. And if you're really athletic, you can rob home runs here and there as well, which I think every every outfielder on this team is capable of doing. And we've seen Springer do it. I know Kevin Kiermaier can definitely do it. And I know Varsho can definitely do it. So now you have three guys that can make doubles become singles, triples become doubles, home runs become allowed out. Um, you know, those type of things are really valuable to a team because now you don't have as much pressure about hitting a long home run every single time you're back or getting that double because you don't have to get as many runs to win and then you can take a look at the pitching side now the pitching hasn't improved significantly but you have added a little bit of depth in the bullpen and in the starting rotation so we got the first trade to Oscar Hernandez for Eric Swanson Eric Swanson is a really great addition to our bullpen on top of Zach Pop and Anthony Bass last uh, last year at the trade deadline. And obviously, you know, Anthony Bass did not have the most uh, greatest outing in the second game of the wild card, um, if I'm not mistaken. I know he got roughed up, I'm pretty sure. Um, but now the thing is, it's even if it's one or two maybe less innings a game for um, – Adam Simber, Anthony Bass, or Jordan Romano, it's, you have that other option. Again, is it a significant amount of time? Is it a significant amount of depth? Not really. But now you have more options for more games. And I really think that helps. And I meant more games as in like, you know, you have someone who's steady for 162 not some call up that's going to do a couple months work because someone got injured you have someone who's steady and if tim Mesa can stay healthy this year um i know that last year he had that freak injury in seattle where he i think it was something to do with his arm or his shoulder um when he ran to home plate to make a, a play um so you know if we can have him stay healthy that's also great back end piece of the bullpen or even middle relief and then we also improved our starting pitching by getting Chris Bassett and we also have to look at Jose Barrios's track record is Jose Barrios 
hundred percent going to do better than last year. I mean, we can only hope, but I think what Buck and Pat talked about last year a little bit was the fact that Jose Brios has so much pride that he doesn't really take time off, that he doesn't really want to say he has an injury. So that is something that could have very well put Brios on the back burner last year was the fact that, you know, he was too prideful to really take time off because of an injury or he didn't even really go and get the injury checked out and he just played through. And if that's the case, can we pretty much guarantee a bounce back season? I would say so. I mean, he did significantly well his five years um, that he pitched in Minnesota prior to coming to the Blue Jays. Um, or I guess it was five and a half, maybe even a little bit more, uh, depending on what time of year he first came up to the majors. But nonetheless, he has a significant track record that proves that he can pitch really well day in and day out. And I really think in 2023, he's going to bounce back. And then we also have Alex Manoa, who has one more year of high performance. I mean, there's nothing to be worried about with him. You know, he had a little bit of the postseason scares um, at the beginning, which unfortunately didn't do well for us, giving up the four runs in the first inning. But it is what it is. He's got another year under his belt. Kevin Gosman, he's going to be a numbers guy again. He's going to absolutely pitch his heart out for this team. Um, so now you have four pretty solid uh, starting pitchers right at the beginning. And Ryu was at spring training. And I know I did another video where I said he's back. Other people are saying that he's just there. I doubt it. If Ryu is not injured, which I certainly hope he is not, and that's your five guy, I mean, that's abs I, that is truly absurd. And I'm not trying to get ahead of myself, but if we have those five guys, and that means Kikuchi and White are your six and seven guys, which I mentioned in the other video, or in the bullpen, I mean, that is terrific. Even if it's Kikuchi or White as their number five guy, what I liked about Mitch White was that, you know, yes, he gave up a lot of runs, but I feel like it was a lack of not so much confidence, but almost like a lack of trying. I don't, like, he didn't really lose his composure is what I liked about it, is that I think he can become better. Like, I know he's already a little bit older, older, 28 or whatever, um, but I really do think that he can improve Versus Kikuchi is like a train wreck. I don't know what to expect. I want to hope he's better in 2023, but excuse me, hard to say. Um, but nonetheless, I think that the Blue Jays have improved in what they need to improve. I wouldn't say based on the players they got that the players they have now are 10 times better than the players we had last year, um, the ones that we've replaced. What I would say is that the players we have got make more sense for his team in terms of what they're bringing. And I think that we've added, you know, a couple more pitchers. I, I also forgot to mention that we got Chad Green. Now, there's a chance that he doesn't pitch until midway through the season, um, which is a very high possibility. But I cannot forget him in this video. Chad Green, that's another great back end of the bullpen piece. Um, you know, it's just the depth. Two more options, which will allow other guys to get more rest, maybe work on some other pitches, maybe, you know, do some more video studying, get some more feedback from other pitchers about what they're seeing about the guys at the plate. I mean, again, what this team needed is finally what we got, some left-handed uh, left handed batters, better defenders, and more and better pitching. And... I really think that as long as guys like Bo Bichette and, you know, Matt Chapman even a little bit, you know, he needs to have a higher batting average this year. If those guys can strike out less and then allow Vlad and Springer to not try as hard, and then you add in Kevin Kiermaier's pesky at bat, Sultan Varsho hitting from the left side with some pop, and Brandon Belt bringing that playoff experience as well, and World Series championship experience i really do think the blue jays won the world series but again i think it really depends on some of the young guys first and what they bring this season and obviously postseason and boba and matt chapman 
and um, just the overall team exposure and, you know, how we react and not getting too overhyped, but also maintaining a high level of confidence. Um, you know, the com we almost need that confidence level that the 2015 and 2016, 2015 and 2016 team had was out being cocky and trying to be the best player but we need that comments in working in a team flow and that's what will win us a world series we obviously got a long way to go official games and spring training had not even started yet so we gotta get through that first but we'll see how the blue jays do this year go jays go and see you guys in the next video